working with dynamic objects and object real names in your script using FrogLogic Squish. Using the address book sample application, I created a script that simply goes through, opens an address book entry, and edits an entry. However, you'll notice that these objects are referencing each address book entry by their column and row, and not necessarily by um, the text or other properties that to you identify that object. If I click on one of these objects to see how I'm identifying that object, I'll right click and select open symbolic name. I can see that I'm using the column and the row to identify this object and nowhere in here does it show me the text or that string I'm actually looking for, the name for example. You can also see here I've begin, I'm beginning to have some duplicate entries because each time that same object type but with a different row or column quantity or value is interacted with as I record, it's entered. But those aren't going to be valuable for me in my script because this object is that dynamic. So how can I handle that? If we take a look, for example, at this QTable widget object, let's see how we're finding that object. We'll open the symbolic name in our object map and we can see here how we're finding the object. If I want that object's real name instead of its symbolic name, I can simply right click on that object and select copy real name. Now I can use that object's real name in my script in place of using the object's symbolic name. Because of that, I can also take a look at various parameters and see which ones I might want to replace with perhaps variables from my script. So let's take a look at this script but in an edited version where I've created it to be more dynamic. I'm still going through and opening my application. I now have defined what text I want to find and what I want to replace. Remember those text items aren't used um, to find the object initially, so how am I going to find this object? I don't want to use an object occurrence because, or reoccurrence because that can be unreliable if things shift or move around. I want to find something reliable to find my object with. So here I have my cell, which is a variable I'm defining and I'm taking an object that I'm waiting for and you'll notice I'm building the object's real name as my script runs. So that same object real name that I copied earlier in this demonstration, I've now parsed to use this text to find property so that it finds the object with that text and then I'm able to see that object's column and row by simply accessing the object I've saved into the my cell variable. I am also logging that to the report just to show myself that I know now the row and the column where the text is located that I want to use. Now that I have that, since when I'm looking for this object, I'm interacting with the object, but I'm also clicking on a specific row and column, I have that and I can use it to either interact with the object that doesn't have the row and column built into it, but requires me to then click on a certain area related to that object. Or if we come down below, when I'm typing into a specific cell, I want to make sure I'm typing into the cell that contains that column and that row index that I found earlier. But you'll notice using this real name, I have nowhere in that real name do I have the information about the actual string that I'm replacing. That's because I'm finding it using that column and row, but if that column and row changes, my script is now intelligent enough to capture where that column and row is and then provide my replacement text into the correct object and come down and compare that my replacement text actually exists now in the object that I've built the object reference to dynamically using an object real name. So if we run this script, it will replace the proper name that I've selected for it to replace. Just to show you that we can quickly change this, let's run the application and I'm going to open up the address book and find a different name so that we'll have it change the column. So 
let's go out to that same address book. And let's pick this name. Okay. So here, now I'm going to find that name instead. I'm simply going to run it. And now it will replace and find the text in a different area because I've modified my script to be dynamic. It's also logging its location and the comparison result. Now my script doesn't look all that clean. What if this is something that I want to do repeatedly? Well, I can then shorten that main script if it's something I'm using repeatedly by creating an external function and simply calling that with the text to provide, to find, and the text to replace. You'll notice up above I'm indicating that there is an external file to this particular test case and to go look at it in my scripts, which could be my scripts in my test suite resources, or over here we also have global scripts separate from your test suite. So I created a script file in my test suite resources, which now contains a function which provides the text to find in the replacement text, and then has the comparison at the end. Now from my script that I've greatly simplified but now can work with any column or row combination in this dynamic object or set of objects in my application. I can run this script and it's using that now shared function across my test suite. Evaluate today. Go to froglogic.com evaluate for your free 30-day evaluation and also check out our resources at froglogic.com resources where you have access to our knowledge base, documentation, other videos, tech papers, and information, as well as emailing squish at froglogic.com for support.